Welcome to the Middle Surf Mike channel. Now other channels have claimed the right to top five videos, so I'm going to give my list of the top six pistol designers of the 20th century. Now while this list is subjective on my part, I do think I have some good arguments for my picks. Now before I say mine, who are your top two designers? Let me know in the comments below. The first names on my list are in no particular order, while my final designer is almost a universal consensus number one. Since I said 20th century, this will eliminate some early players like Bergman and Borchardt. To make my list, the designer doesn't necessarily have to be the creator of a concept, sometimes finding the best ways to simplify or combine previous designs are the genius in their designs. This would be the case for Franz Czekuski of Czeska Srovica. He along with his brother Joseph are longtime employees in Czechoslovakia's gun factories and they were actually retired when they were asked for a defensive pistol to fire a 9mm Parabellum. There are monetary and political factors that are at work here which I'll delve deeper into when I do my full video on the CC75, which should come in the first half of next year since I actually found a magazine for this old pre-B boy. But the short of this is that we got one of the first true Wonder 9s that are combined the aspects from the Dudenese Browning Design High Power, Charles Petter Patton's SIG P49 P210, and of course, making the firearm double action single action, which came from several other designers that I have on this list. The CZ-75 is still considered one of the best non-polymer frame handguns to this day. Now the next designer on this list headed up the creation of pistols from one of the most renowned firearms producers of the 20th century. Fritz Walther convinced his father that auto-loading handguns were the future pretty much as soon as he finished his apprenticeship in Berlin. Fritz and Carl would design pocket pistols, then develop the 32 ACP holster pistol intended for the police in the Model 4. High quality and undercutting competitors in price would make their pistols sell successfully, and the Model 4 would see massive production as a secondary pistol during the First World War. Link to the full video of the Model 4 will be at the end of this video. After the war, Fritz and his brothers Georg and Eric would keep Walther afloat through the Versailles neutering, Georg designing the very successful 25 ACP target hol holster pistol, the Model 8. While the Model 4 was still a big seller, they looked to replace it for the police market with an all-new pistol which had become the PP and the PPK. Link to the PP video will also be at the end of this video. Fritz took inspiration from another person on this, on this list, who I'll get to in a moment, in creating the first mass-produced double-action single-action pistol on the market. The Walthers would later take the double-action single-action, match it up with a short recoil system, and make what was probably the best designed mass-produced pistol of World War II, the P-38. The internals of the P-38 would find their way into a ladder design by the next person on my list, Tulio Marangoni. Now, Brett is the oldest firearms manufacturer, as well as the oldest family-run business in the world, dating back to the 1500s. By the early 1900s, Pietro Barretta would be the head of the company, and a friend of his nephew, who had no formal training, would use this connection to get hired on. This would be perhaps the best hire in the company's history, Tulio Marangoni. Marangoni would design many of Beretta's submachine guns, as well as create the lineage of Beretta pistols. Now since this video is the top six pistol designers, I will just stick with that aspect. Marangoni would design what would later become the Model 1915 pistol to compete with the officially adopted Glacenti 1910 in an attempt to get the government contract. The Glacenti was complex, while the 1915 was a simple blowback pistol and was the first to support the classic Beretta open slide for simplicity and savings. It fired the 9mm Glacenti round, which is basically a neutered 9mm Parabellum. This pistol, along with the M18 submachine gun, would see Marangoni promoted to head of development. He would make updates to his pistols over the next decade to fire different caliber rounds. These pistols would also continue to take the shape of what almost everyone who knows guns would recognize as a Beretta pistol. He would also work for simplifications to make for easier production and maintenance. This would result in the M1934 and 380 ACP and would be adopted by the Italian military as the official sidearm in 1936. The Beretta's simplicity and ease of production, it only broke down into 39 parts, is a big reason it beat out the Walther PP in those trials. After the Second World War, NATO wanted the standardization of the 9mm Parabellum or Luger so Beretta would task the agent Marangoni to design a gun to handle the round, as simple blowback wasn't going to cut it. Keeping Beretta styling, he would design a lock breech pistol with 
basically Walther P-38 internals to create the Beretta in 1951. While Marangoni would retire in 1956, the 1951 would be the basis for later 90, 92, and the M9 series pistols, which would be adopted as the official sidearms of militaries around the world. Assisi, Walther, and later Tullio Marangoni designs all owe a great debt to the next designer on my list, Czech Alois Tomiska. Tomiska would patent a double action mechanism for auto loading pistols in 1908. While this Little Tom pistol is an oddball vest pocket or mouse gun that fired 25 ACP, prior to this, double action triggers that would both cock and fire a handgun were almost exclusively in the realm of revolvers. He would produce these pistols via Weiner Waffenfabrik under the name Little Tom through the 1920s. He worked in the early stages of Cheska Shrovica or CZ and his 25 ACP VZ 1922, not to be confused with the VZ 22, would be the first pistol to bear the CZ logo. CZ greats like Franciszek Maiska would take much inspiration from Tomiska in designing the CZ 36 and 38 pistols and the Crotticville brothers when they designed the CZ 45 and 50 pistols. Another inspiration for the CZ 50 would be of course the Walther PPK, another pistol that owed great debt to Tomiska's Little Tom. Fritz Walther actually approached Tomiska about marketing pistols incorporating Tomiska's patents. Walther would purchase rights to his patents, combining those with his own to produce the PP. Now jumping ahead a half century or so, I'll have to include someone that I know contrarians out there will scoff at, and to those I say, get out of your mom's basement and touch grass. While pretty much a one-trick pony, Gaston Glock designed what is the most popular police and civilian pistol sold today due to simplicity and ruggedness. Prior to making pistols, Glock made curtain rods and knives. Thanks to the latter for the Austrian military, he had just enough access to discover that they were looking for a new sidearm. Already in his 50s and never designed and have never designed a gun, he was a blank slate, which actually helped him out. He'd work on his polymer frame, striker fire pistol in his basement shooting range, using contacts to invite military leadership over to test his prototypes and take suggestions for improvements. While you hear many complain about the grip angle, he actually designed it for to be the most natural for point and shoot. The polymer wrap magazines also made them some of the most reliable in the world. He would win the military contract with his P-80 pistol, build his company up, and enter the U.S. market by slowly but surely convincing police departments to replace the 38 revolvers with his newfangled Tupperware gun. He wasn't the first to use a polymer frame. HK beat him to it with that double action only VP-70 by over a decade, but he was the first to make a truly successful and reliable mass-produced polymer frame striker fire pistol. The template which is pretty much copied by almost every modern gun designer to this day. There are other cool stories about Glock which we'll have to take a deeper dive into. A couple examples of the 40 story and him beating up a hitman that was hired to kill him. Uh, I'll do this when I do a Glock history video in the future. Now before I get to the consensus number one pistol designer, I'm going to mention a few honorable mentions. Charles Petter, who designed the French 1935A pistol, and later took his patents to SIG and produced the P-49 and P-210. Soviet designers Fedor Tokarov, who made the tough sidearm to fire the new hot 7.62 by 25 submachine ground, and Nikolai Makarov, who greatly simplified the Walther PP to produce a robust, easy to mass produce pistol with few parts in his model 1951. Finally, I mentioned Dudenay Save, who be given credit for the Browning High Power, or who should be given credit for the Browning High Power. The first Wonder 9, which is started by number one on this list, John Moses Browning. I mean, who else could it be? Not only the greatest pistol designer, John Moses Browning was history's greatest small arms designer. He spent the late 19th century designing lever action and pump action shotguns for Winchester while developing a machine gun. Since Winchester wasn't interested in making handguns, the first mistake, his handguns would be shopped to Colt in the U.S. and FN in Europe. Prior to this, T.G. Bennett of Winchester would pay Browning for his long gun ideas, take out a patent in his name, and make a huge profit. Now, Browning would see his true monetary value when his retroactively named FN 1900 pistol became a huge success in Europe, and he was paid via royalty deal where he made a huge chunk of cash. Bennett would stall on Browning's semi-auto long gun ideas, his second mistake, 
and the breakup of Browning would be complete after Browning wanted a royalty deal on these, his final mistake. Browning would take his long gun designs to Remington in the US and FN in Europe, while Bennett would need the absolute genius of T.C. Johnson to design long guns that didn't infringe on Browning's patents. Let's get back to the handguns. John Moses Browning's handguns have become the general template the world over for handgun designs, whether it be the shape or internals. Colt would be most interested in large, hammer-fired pistols, while FN would be mainly interested in small frame, simple blowback pistols in Europe. The FN 1900, FN 1910, and Colt 1903 hammerless would be the inspiration for almost every pistol design for the next three quarters of a century. While in the Euro S, the 1903, and of course the deified 1911 would end up as king. Most pistols that were equal to or better than the 1911 by the Second World War, such as the TT-33 and VIS-35, and the high power, which were, based off, were all based off Browning designs. Browning would begin the high power before his death, mainly aimed at the French trials, while Dudenay Save would finish it. The pistol that beat the high power out in these trials, the 1935A, would also be based off Browning's work. Browning's influence on what became the modern semi-auto handgun cannot be overstated. Now I've given a thousand foot overview on these designers, so if you want to learn more in-depth information on at least one of these designers, click over here. Please join the GOA, get $5 off your membership with the link below. Thank you for watching and as always, have a great day.